Broken bottles, burnt tires were evident at the scene earlier in the day. According to reports, the crisis started as police officers from the Lagos Police Command tried to disperse Yoruba Nation agitators. Though calm has been restored, there is heavy presence of security agents with their vehicle strategically positioned. It's been difficult getting those in the area to volunteer information, as most claimed they weren't around when the incident occurred. Speaking earlier on TVC News, the police public relations officer gives more insight on the crisis. If it was um, a procession that, um, that wasn't um, disrupting flow of traffic, then of course we would be there to provide security for them. But these were clearly people armed with pump action rifles. And even before the police got there, they were already shooting in the air and they were already scaring people. So we received numerous calls from people saying some people were shooting sporadically. So definitely, those are not the kind of people you want to provide security for. These are the kind of people you need to disperse and get arrested. The um, Lagosians in general will be fiercely resisted and such people will be decisively dealt with in accordance with the provisions of the law. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Commission of Police, CP Abiodun Labi, has issued a stain warning that anyone or group of persons found disturbing the peace of the state will be dealt with in accordance with the provisions of the law. Part of the statement reads, though the command is not averse to people's right to freedom of assembly and association and expression, the command will equally live up to its mandate of ensuring that no person or group of persons is allowed to infringe on the fundamental human rights of others. Yeah. Yeah. A symbolic presentation of appointment letters to some members of the Presidential Campaign Council of the New Nigeria People's Party. The council has the mandate of the party to take the crusade for a new Nigeria to all nooks and crannies of the country. New Nigeria! NNPP insists it is not merging with any political party to win the election as it rises stoutly against present opinion polls. Nigerians say no to the old dinosaurs. I want to assure you that this is time for us to lead, for you to lead Nigeria because the course is clear and our victory is certain, inshallah. We are watching with the keen interest the role of the security agencies, the role of certain state governments, and even the role of INEP in an attempt to midwife a free, fair, and transparent election. It is an opportunity for the party to launch its fundraising portal towards the realization of its goal. And I expect that we will begin to expressly consider donating to this noble cause so we can achieve maximum results in a short time. For the party's standard bearer, education, security, improved economy, power and healthcare services are some of the priorities of his government if elected. The President Muhammad Buhari's scorecard media series resumes with a spotlight on the Ministry of Petroleum. The Minister of State takes the stage to present his scorecard, highlighting nine priority areas for the oil and gas sector. Some of the strategic priorities is to eradicate the smuggling of PMS across Nigeria's borders, completion of its gas flare commercialization program, poverty eradication, amongst others. The minister says though the government does not have powers to control the market forces in determining the price of PMS, it has secured funding to rehabilitate the country's existing refineries. He says this development will help reduce the price of PMS and increase accessibility to the product. What is desirable, as far as we are concerned, is to ensure that petroleum price is market-driven. That way it will also drive a lot of investments. There are a lot of people who would like to invest, private sector investors who would like to invest in this sector. But under a subsidized regime, who is going to invest? If you build a refinery, how is your refinery going to make profit? 
under a subsidy regime. But if you have a market-driven uh, situation, you see that a lot of investors will come and of course there will be more refineries and this problem of access to uh, petroleum product would be a thing of the past.